All right, hey everybody, welcome to the next tutorial. In this one, we are going to learn how to make the classic brick and paddle game where we try to hit the ball off of our paddle to destroy all the bricks before the ball uh, misses our paddle and we lose. This will teach us um, about momentum today and how to use variables in order to create the illusion of momentum. This will really help your movements make a lot more realistic. We will also learn how to make our sprites bounce off various other sprites. So that should be something of interest as well. So first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to name my game and I will name this Break the Bricks. You can name it what you want. And I don't need Scratchy here, so I'm just going to delete him. And all of our sprites that we do today, we are going to be drawing them. So I'm going to go over to the new sprite, and I'm going to press Draw. And I have everything I need right here. I am just going to press Rectangle, and making sure that it is on this one, not on this one. I'm going to press that and pick the color that you want for your block and we'll just draw a little rectangle like that. And so when you draw things, it normally brings you here to bitmap mode. And this bitmap mode will be, it's controlled mainly by pixels and that's good for drawing. And we can convert it into vector which is more image based and helps us. It is easier if we want to control the size of something it is easier for, for to convert it into vector mode. So you could you can go back and forth between these two. No problem. Just whatever seems to be easier for whatever project that you're working on. Uh, that's probably the one that you want to use. But for our purposes um, of re sizing this brick, I want to do this in vector mode because I could just click on this right here because that brick is too big for what I want. And I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to make it still smaller. And that was good. Okay, so just press enter. And go back to scripts. And I'm just going to drag it right down here. Okay, so we have the foundation of our game, that brick right there. Now, what I want to do in this game is I want to the brick to go left and right, but I don't just want it to go left a little bit when I press left and then completely stop. I want it to go left, and as I press left more, the speed increases. And then when I press, when I let go of left, the speed... It doesn't just stop all of a sudden. It will take a little while to slow down, just like if you're in a car or anything else that's moving. If you decide to stop, it doesn't stop instantaneously. It takes a little while. So let's look at how we can do that. We need to go over here to data. We need to make a variable. We're going to call that variable speed. Okay. And when we first start our game, we always want to make sure that that variable speed is set at zero. So it's not moving. And we're going to do a little if, then, or else statement here. And I'm going to bring this out. And what we want to do is that if, I can do the right arrow first. If the right arrow is pressed, where is that? If the right arrow is pressed, then all we want to do is change speed by one. OK, so now if we press right, we need to do our, yeah, we'll, we'll take care of that later. Okay. Um, and if, no, I should just do it now. Never mind. Okay, so we have our little thing here. And in forever, when this is clicked, if the green flag is pressed and I press right, it just goes up a lot. Okay. Now, what we want to make sure to have that not happen put this down here is if the if the right arrow is not pressed then we need to change the speed but what we need to do to fit it inside of that is that we want to make sure that if we let it go um, it doesn't just keep on going down to negative infinity it will stop at zero so what we need to do is that we need a little less than sign and if our speed
if our speed is greater than zero, then we want to change the speed by negative one. And we want to wait 0.1 seconds so that it doesn't happen instantaneously. And so I could put that right there. And now this should work that when I press the green flag, it'll set the speed to zero. And then if I press the right arrow, it will change the speed by one. However, if I let go of that right arrow, if the speed is less, oh, we did this wrong. If the speed is greater than zero, then we are going to change the speed by negative one, waiting 0.1 seconds between each iteration. So let's try this out. All right. And it doesn't work. Why is that? Oh, I know why. Okay. It doesn't work because we haven't affected the movement yet. What we need to do is that when the green flag is clicked forever, we just want to change, we just want to change X by whatever that speed is. So this will change the variable. Right now it's at 304,000, which is gonna make it go very quickly. Um, but if we look over here, then we will change the speed and then that will change this variable right here and that's what will cause x to change by a certain amount so let's press this and what happens if we there we go perfect now let's make sure that we can move it so i am going to duplicate this i'm just going to change a couple things i'm going to do the left arrow instead and when I press the left arrow, I don't want to change speed by one. I want to change speed by a negative one. It's going to be the exact opposite as before. And because it's the exact opposite, we need to change the less than. And we're going to have if the speed is less than zero, then we want to change the speed by one. Still waiting 0.1 seconds in between. I'm going to clean this up so that it looks good. And now when I press this, it should work. Let's see. There we go. And you can see how it has a little has a little gliding motion to it and it just looks a lot more natural than if we had done when right arrow is clicked change x by 10 okay and we don't need to do this with up and down because we're going to keep this on the bottom the entire time all right so now that we've done that we can make our next sprite which will be the ball so I'm gonna paint a new sprite over here. I'm gonna make a little ball, making sure that it's this one right here. I'll keep it on blue and make a little ball and convert it to vector and that's too big. So so I am going to make it a little smaller. Let's see how that looks, so it's still too big. And let's try that. Still, there we go. That looks about right. Now, what I want to do is I want to set up the ball in a certain area. And when the green flag is clicked, it just needs to move while bouncing off various things. So I'm going to go back to scripts and I'm going to get my events. So when green flag is clicked, it's going to point in a direction. We don't want it pointing directly down because it makes it very difficult for the user if as soon as they start the game, it is going in a random direction right towards their paddle. So we want to start it going more or less straight up. Um, so we are going to point in direction. We're going to make it go 340 degrees. So right, uh, just click on that, 340. And it will be going up more or less in that direction, and that will work well. Now we also want it to start in a different spot. We don't want it, you know, if it's if they finish the game down here, they finish the game up here. We don't want it starting right there. So we need to pick a spot to go to. So we're just going to do the classic go to X Y, and we're going to bring this out here. Now we can decide where we want to put it on the on the Y axis. 
And I think a good spot for that is about right here with Y, a little bit lower, Y, Y negative 15 is pretty good. So it's going to be going up too. We, you could always fiddle with that if you don't like it. Uh, but what we want to do, we don't want the uh, ball starting at the same spot every single time because then we would just we, we would get the same game every single time. So what we want to do is we want to pick a random number. So if we go here and put this into there, and then we want it starting anywhere from way over here to way over there. So I'm going to do from negative 20, negative 220, sorry, to positive 220. And so now when we press, when we press the green flag, it'll point up, almost up, not all the way up. And then it will pick a random spot between here and here to go to, and um, it will start. So let's see. And you can see it's picking various places to start so that each time the user does not know where their game is going to begin. Now that we've done that, we're going to wait a little bit for the user to get their bearings. And so we're going to wait 0.5 seconds. And we are going to, just from that point forever, it's just going to move 10 steps. And what, I don't know if I've, ever, if I've ever explained this, but what a step does is that whatever direction it's pointing in, it moves in. So if it is pointing to the right here, the steps it will go, it will just move to the right. And then if you were switching the direction of it, if you switched it uh, to zero degrees or 90 degrees, it would just move in, in that direction and follow those. It doesn't pay attention to the X, Y commands. It, it pays attention to what direction it's pointing in. So depending on what you're doing, sometimes it's more helpful to use steps. Sometimes it's more helpful to use X and Y. Okay, so we have that there. It's going to move 10 steps. And what we want to do, there's a new block here. If it's on the edge of the wall, we want it to bounce off. And so now when we press the green flag, it'll point in the direction, pick a random number to go to. It's going to wait 0.5 seconds. And then forever, it's going to move 10 steps while bouncing on the edge. Let's see if this works. I don't know why that looks funky. Well, let's keep it like that for now. That shouldn't happen. Oh, let me uh, do it with the costume. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what our problem is, I believe, let's hope this works, is that our ball, it's all the commands are centered on this little X right here, but our ball is off to the right. So what we want to try to do is we want to put it on the center so that the, it, it responds more accurately to these commands. Let's see if this works. Yeah, there we go. All right, that looks a lot better. Okay, so now we have the start of our game. So what we're going to do now, we have the ball moving around, but we want to make sure that if it touches this paddle, then it also does the same thing and bounces off and goes in the opposite direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the little if and then statement. So if this ball is touching sprite one, then we want it to do something. We want it to point in a different direction. So we're going to go down here into point in direction, and we have to do a little math here to figure out which way we are going to do it. So we need a couple ands. And we are going to take the direction, what are we going to do first? We are going to have two things. We're going to have go back here to motion and we're going to find the direction. This is just whatever direction that the ball is, where is this going? That the ball is currently going in. Oh, so I did this wrong. So we don't want the ands, sorry. We do want a math thing and we want plus. That's, that makes sense. 
So we have the direction, and it's going to be, we are going, ah, sorry, we're not gonna do it by plus either, we're gonna do it by multiplication, because we want to do the exact negative opposite of whatever the direction is. So in order to do that, we're gonna do direction times negative one, and that's what we want. Now we want the plus. So we are gonna add this over to 180, all right? So we have the direction, it will change it. So for example, if the direction is 45, it will be multiplied by negative one, that will make it negative 45, and then we will add 180, so it will come out into 135. Um, and it's important that you put these on the right way. I had a lot of trouble figuring this out, but the direction and the multiplied by one need to be together. Um, it can't be like the negative one and the and the 180 are are together. They seem the same, but they're the not. Uh, but they're not. So I believe in order to do this, we have to put this in first, and then we put in this one. Yeah. So see how it seems like the direction times negative one is grouped together, and then in a separate block, there's the plus 180. That's what you want. If you do, if you don't do it like that, it will not work correctly. And all we're gonna do now is wrap it in a forever loop. And when green flag click, and let's try this out, this should work. Oops, why is that drawn? For some reason we have a pen down. When that happened. It's kind of pretty, but we don't want that happening. Uh, clear pen up. I don't know why that happened. It's, all right, that's better. And now it works perfectly. There we go. And you can see we just move it around and it will cause that to bounce up. Now what we want to do is we want to make the bricks that the ball must destroy and bounce off of. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make another new sprite, we're gonna paint it, and we're gonna just gonna do the same thing. Um, I'm gonna switch this color, I'm gonna make it red. It is highlighted in red, and I'm just gonna make a nice brick, convert it into vector so we could see how big we want it. That's almost good, I want it a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna do that, and that looks about right. So let's try this out. I, I'm gonna move it up here, and I'm just going to make I'm gonna make another, let's say 11 of the, let's try 10 at first and see what happens. Actually, let's wait on this because we, we can get our commands and then we could copy and paste it and that will be much easier. So just right, I'm gonna delete these. Let's get our command in this guy first. So what we wanna do, it's pretty simple. We wanna just, if it's touching Sprite 2, we want it to disappear. So let's, when the green flag is clicked, first we wanna make sure it's showing up if we did hide it before. So when green flag is clicked, we wanna show it. And then just simple if then statement, if it is touching. Sprite two, then we want to hide. And we're also gonna have a score here that determines when you win the game. So if there's 10 blocks and we hit all 10, then we wanna make sure that the, uh, the game knows that you made all the blocks go away. So all we're gonna do is each time it hides, we're gonna make a variable called score. We're not gonna show this, but it'll be there for now. We're gonna make a variable called score and we just wanna change score by one. So each time it hits this brick, the brick's gonna go away, but it's going to add over to the score and we will know when we beat the game. Now the one last thing that we have to do here is we need to make sure that the ball bounces off the brick and doesn't just go through it or else it'll seem weird and it'll probably make the game much easier to beat. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to right click this and I'm gonna duplicate it. The only thing I need to change is that instead of doing sprite uh, one, we are going to do sprite three. So now when I press the green flag, this should go around and when I hit this, it should bounce back, but it should also 
disappear and it should add one to the score. So let's try this out. It doesn't disappear. All right, so something went wrong. Let's try to figure out what this is. Yeah, that will uh, that will happen. So I clearly I did not put the green flag connected to the thing, and I also did not put this in a forever loop. And so let's go back down here, and now let's try it. There we go. Perfect. And now let's show this, and let's just make a lot of copies of these. We'll see how many we need. I'll make 10 at first. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's see if we can get these all in the right areas. Um, let's hide some for now. We can keep it down here. Right there. There, 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 I could make these nice and flat. There we go. Looks like good. I'm trying to make them nice and even. And let's put these on top in between. And I think we might actually have the right number here. This might work. We actually have one too many. All right. So I just need to figure out which one this is. Double click on it. Sprite 7. I could delete that. Okay. So just remember that we are missing a Sprite 7. It just goes directly from 6 to 8. So now what we need to do, we just need, they should all have the correct commands in them. So these will all bounce off of it when we, or no, they will all disappear when it hits it, but we just need to make sure that they are bouncing off as well. So we have, how many, we have three, we have nine of these, we already did one, so we need to make eight copies. Duplicate, duplicate. Duplicate, duplicate. Is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? And I think we need this ninth one, two, right? All right, so now I'm just going to make this cleaner, right click clean up. And I'm going to make sure all of these have this. I, I need to switch the sprite. So touching Sprite 3, now let's switch this to Sprite 4. Sprite 4, let's switch this to Sprite 5. Let's sprite, switch this to Sprite 6. Let's switch this to Sprite 7, we're missing 8. Switch this to 9. 10. 11 and we're going to get this down here so it's with all his friends and 12 okay and now what we have here it should when we press the green flag should go to the correct spot and then it should break all these bricks so let's try this out uh, for now that's okay to One of them didn't work, that's why we test it out. All right, so let's figure out which one that is. Sprite 11. So let's go back here, we're missing a Sprite 11. Oh wait, Sprite, it should work. I'm gonna try this out again. There we go. I don't know why it didn't work that first time. Okay, so now we have that. We can get rid of all of these. Now we just need to make two scenarios here, one in which we win and one in which we 
lose. So I'm going to go back here just for a spot. And I am going to make my score here. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks. So if we need to make an if and then statement, if the score We need a greater than. If the score is greater than, what did I say before? Is greater than eight, because we have nine. So if it hits nine, then we want to broadcast a message. We want to say game over. So we are going to go to events and we are going to broadcast the new message, uh, the winning scenario. So let's have win for now. And let's put this in a forever loop. And we also always want to, when we do this, want to make sure the score is reset. So we're going to set the score to zero. When green flag is clicked, set score to zero. And it should keep track of that. One more thing we're going to do. We are going to have a little a, a sprite down here that if it touches it, then you are going to lose the game. So let's get a new sprite. We're going to paint this again. You want to make sure you're all the way zoomed out so it goes all the way across. We're going to just going to get another one of these. I'm going to switch the color to green this time and have it like that. Convert it to vector. See if we need to change the height. Why is it not showing up? Oh, there we go. That's weird. I don't really know why that does that, but okay. Nope, oh, works anyway. So we have this. Now, if the ball touches that green, then we want to lose. So we're just going to do this green flag, forever loop, if touching sprite two, that's the ball. Sprite 2, then we are going to broadcast. Oh, I was going down there for that. Broadcast new message, and that new message is going to be lose. So we have that there, and let's put that in there. And now let's get these scenarios set up. So when I receive, let's just keep it in here, when I receive win, we are going to, oh, sorry, now we need to make uh, two new variables, or two new sprites. We need to make a message for winning. Let's say you win. And let's give some exclamation points. You win, let's see how big it is. We probably want it bigger than that. So I'm gonna click that, boom. You win. All right, that looks good. And we're gonna make, ah, oops. That's good for now. We are going to make another one that says, you lose. So here, you lose. And let's have them be excited about that too. All right, I love exclamation points and we are going to get that, make it bigger. Perfect. So you win. Let's go to the scripts. We want to make sure that when the green flag is clicked, it goes away. So when green flag is clicked, um, 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 when green flag is clicked, hide. We could just do. Oops, my fault. Did that by mistake. Green flag is clicked, hide, and we could just duplicate this, put it in there because we want that for both of them. Just check to make sure it's there. Yep. And when I receive lose. We want to show it. Very simple. Show and we want to stop all the scripts too. We want the ball stopping. So we just go to control and stop all. And you lose. When I receive lose, I did the right one here, right? Oops. 
I want to change that to win. Ready now receive lose. Show and stop all scripts. Ah. Sorry about that. There we go. All right, now let's try this out. Let's try losing first. Good, that works. And let's try it, whoops. Right. Gotta get better at this. Why does that happen? All right, so we do have it does work, but for some reason, it takes a little extra to get those. I don't know why. Let's show all these again. Let's make, which one is that? Spread 11, hide, change square bay. All right. Not exactly, that shouldn't be happening, but I'll take it on uh, faith for now that it will work. Um, if they have to hit it twice, that's all right. So the last thing we want to do is we want to hide the variable score because we don't need it. And we want to hide the variable speed. And that should be your game. So congratulations on finishing. And we will be doing a new tutorial um, that should be available soon. So thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoy your game. Bye.